All right, let's head straight to the markets now. We have Willie Bong um, with the details. And uh, I know, Will, I know you love to save, but um, going by what Mr. Abel said, I think it's time for you to spend. <laughs> yes, it's time to spend. But I'm thinking Nigerians might not be able to spend again now that Kimberly Clark is Right. You know, planning to exit yeah. the country. That's another uh, bad That's one another there. bummer. You know, that's another potential company that could have listed on the NGX leave in the country. Right. And you know, one of the things that we listen and to. And they produce sensitive materials. Yes, know, they do. Stuff. Very, you know, family care, child care products. That is very, very essential. And if you listen to uh, Biz Macruani's. Uh, uh, I, um, conversation yesterday when he was doing his analysis, he talked about one of the highlights of this administration, what they've, you know, what we've had or what we've seen is companies divesting and leaving the country. Divesting. You know, so the government needs to do more to keep companies. I think they should pay attention to this. We can't keep losing these companies. Because we're going around trying to woo uh, other investors. It's going to be a very so difficult time. So we need to keep time. the ones that are right here, of course. right now. Of course. So we're just going to go straight to the market and see how they performed that intraday, starting with major equities in Africa, where sentiments were mostly negative at intraday. Now, just NGX was slightly up, however, 0.08%. Now at 98,900 points, uh, one of our analysts say that we have broken past the resistance level of 98,429 points. Let's see how that's going to pan out for the NGX. And that index of so South Africa at intraday was down, however, nearly 2%. Elsewhere, let's look at EGX and see how they performed. Nearly 1% down at intraday, still at 26,000 level. Kenya down Wednesday's trading session, ended that session in the red, 0.10%. Uh, now let's look at what's driving intraday activities at the NGX. And joining us is Adeboye Teriba, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Quali Invest Capital Limited. Good afternoon, Mr. Adeboye, Mr. Teriba. It's good to have you on the program. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so stocks are moving, indexes are, you know, slightly high at intraday. So what's uh, moving the markets at the moment? What are the movers? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, the, the market is uh, moved by sentiment and uh, information that comes into it. And currently, we have uh, quite a lot going for uh, penny stocks like likes of international energy, uh, uh, consolidated hallmarks and what of you. But generally, uh, information that comes to the market, especially last week that we had uh, the MPC meeting and the GDP uh, report coming to the market, they all have a parishing effect on the market. The market is still reacting to that. And we saw last week that uh, immediately the uh, that was released and we saw the banking stock uh, going down. But fortunately, this, fortunately this week, we saw some recovery uh, in the banking sector and uh, some uh, uh, blue ship uh, uh, stock as well. But uh, we see more of the uh, low cap stocks are actually uh, being uh, the leaders uh, in the market as we, we speak, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, we see investors uh, trying to uh, rebalance their portfolio as much as possible. And especially now that most of the uh, banking stocks have paid dividend, uh, they are rebalancing their portfolio uh, to take advantage of these low-cap stocks uh, with high volatility and uh, market uh, potential for gain as well. Okay, great and fantastic there. So we also seen, that was yesterday coming in, we saw Dangote Refinery aiming, planning for dual listings on the NGX and the London Stock Exchange. And Dangote says he could try to list the company on the NGX by the end of the year. Mr. Chariba, why the choice of a dual listing to begin with? As we all know, this will be the first of any of his companies to you know, venture into this or attempt this. Yeah, uh, thank you. I, I think uh, it's the best thing for him to do, considering the fact that uh, the fund... Uh, Raised to for the refinery are not uh, wholly locally uh, sourced. A twenty billion uh, dollar uh, investment required uh, him to actually look outside the shore of the country, and uh, I will agree with the uh, with Henry when he said that uh, uh, the depth of the Nigerian market it won't be enough for them to totally uh, list everything here. And uh, Dangote will not be the first. We've seen the like of Seplat and Hertel have been similar uh, listing uh, on the London Stock Exchange and Nigerian uh, Exchange as well. It's uh, something like uh, a reputational thing for Dangote to go out there. I have conquered the Nigerian market, that is what it is. Most of these uh, conglomerates are listed 
on the Nigerian exchange. I know how to uh, go outside there, show that, okay, what I've been able to achieve here can be achieved in other market. And mind you, we need to reform as well in uh, uh, foreign currency in order to service some of these uh, uh, obligations, uh, debt to maturing and what to do. So it needs to be there. Uh, when Seplar came to the market then, uh, when they were listed on London second day, they have a uh, huge impact and, uh, on, on, on the money they raise via that. And I think uh, that would want to take advantage of that. And it is an opportunity for local market. It gives uh, some level of confidence for investors locally as well. It provides opportunity for a whole lot, you know, arbitrary opportunity for people that understand the market buying in London and selling Nigeria, buying Nigeria and selling in London. You know, at every point in time, it's broader investors uh, base as well will be there for investors uh, with different level of understanding of the market dynamics. So it is uh, a way to go. And uh, even in Africa, you know, we have like 12 uh, companies in Africa going through that, you know, having a dual listing. So having a Dangote listed up there, it's uh, an advantage for our own market. It's a visibility for him as well. It, it put him up there in the eyes of the world. This is a refinery that is the biggest in Africa. It need not to be hidden. It has to be up there uh, where the whole world will see it. And uh, it will require a lot of things for him as well because uh, uh, the compliance, uh, the opening up of uh, information that uh, it is required uh, of him uh, because listening to that market, of course, and in Nigeria as well, we require him to provide quite a lot of information to the public. And uh, in the long run, uh, it will be benefit for uh, the firm, the company, and for investors uh, like Nigerian investors that want to actually uh, have an hedge against uh, the Naira as much as possible. Fantastic. But let's focus on the oil and gas sector now in the country. What are the potential implications for other players in the industry, seeing that we've got news this morning that Seplat has reached a settlement agreement with ExxonMobil on the asset sale? How is this going to impact other players in the oil and gas sector here in Nigeria? Yeah, it's a positive thing. This thing has been, uh, the, it has been lingering for, for quite some time. And uh, it's uh, having come to this resolution. Is a way to go, and uh, we we need to increase uh, investment in that uh, area because uh, in times of our daily oil uh, crude oil output, we are still lagging behind, and uh, less than two million barrel per day is short for us to achieve anything. And looking at the stock feed into Dangote uh, refinery, uh, we have a lot, a, a whole lot of way to go. That is why I have to go ahead to be signing part. Uh, with a U.S. firm in order to get a guarantee of crude, because he cannot be uh, assured of what will come from Nigeria. But with this, is a de uh, positive development. It will increase our potential in order to uh, produce more in terms of uh, daily crude oil output. And uh, I see a lot of investment going into that direction as well, looking at, okay, this is uh, a way to resolve this problem. All other ones are maybe lingering. Uh, it's a positive sign that those two will be resolved. And it will be better for Nigeria, better for the oil and gas sector as well. Mm, fantastic news. Uh, so how do you think the market is going to end today? Uh, let's just look at, you know, the close of business. Seeing that we are slightly not in so strong positive territory, do you think we're going to reverse and go back to negative territory in Thursday's session? Uh, it all depends on... Uh, the investors, uh, currently the market is down by 0.2% uh, 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 currently. So uh, it can go, it can see close positively depending on how uh, the, the investors uh, see it and, uh, uh, and take opportunity to the market. So it's still like uh, almost uh, one hour of trading. So anything can still happen. Mm. Anything can still happen. That's the market. Anything can still happen. Thank you so much, Mr. Adeboe Tariba, CEO, uh, Quality Invest Capital Limited, for joining us on Business Incorporated. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.